Happy Friday, everybody. It's Jeff Blankenberg, and I'm here today to do something I've never done before. Um, I generally spend a lot of time on this channel doing stuff and showing stuff and building stuff that I have some experience with, um, but today is not one of those days. So uh, I've been talking a lot about this all week, but I thought um, it was finally time to like pull the trigger and, and really get into it. And so what we're going to do today, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there, um, we're going to figure out how to make one of these work with Alexa. So I don't actually know how to do that yet. There's, there's a lot to be figured out, um, and there's a lot of things that I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through the setup that I've already gone through, because there were a few steps that if I hadn't taken before we got on here, um, we wouldn't have been able to move forward. I think I'm in a place where we can actually move forward. And so I want to walk you quickly through the steps that I took to get from um, before this to where we are right now, because I have the device set up, um, I have the software that I need to have running on it, and I have a cable running from the device directly into my laptop so that I can communicate with it. So with that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to set it down, and we're going to jump over to my everything view over here. Uh, let me fix this. I had this nice little layout where we have the Mindstorms logo kind of sitting there. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going for. Okay, so um, the first thing that you're going to need to know is if I come to the chat room, and I can dump this link for you, um, this is the place that has all of the instructions. And so that's what the, the page that I'm looking at here. So um, there is a page prior to this. There's some challenges and some other things that they offer, and you can click through and find those things as you'd like. Um, but I want to walk you quickly through kind of the setup that was required to get my device ready to go. So the first thing that I had to do uh, is we, oh, here's the missions. So you can see setup and missions that we're going through right here. Um, but the things that we really want to do for setup um, is that we need to get this EV3 dev um, environment running on our device. And so to do that, um, if we click on, let's see if I can find the set up your EV3 environment. Um, they, they say that you're going to need Visual Studio Code. I have that running here. Uh, and we'll use that in just a little while. Uh, and then I need this EV3 dev software. And so these are the things that they want, want us to have in order to be able to do this. And we're going to be doing all this in Python, which is another fun twist to our day because I'm not a Python developer. Uh, I've used it enough that I can probably make my way. Uh, and I'm hoping the instructions are clear, but I am not a knowledgeable Python developer at all. Uh, all right, so to get the EV3 dev environment set up, good morning, Amit. Um, for all of you that don't know Amit, Amit is kind of my partner in crime here at Amazon. Uh, we do a lot of fun things together. We have a show on the Amazon uh, Twitch channel every Tuesday where we review a bunch of skills. Um, and he and I have been working together for many, many years. And uh, he just tweeted out that he went and bought one of these Mindstorms kits just to, to play along today. So uh, Amit, I hate to let you know this now, but uh, you're probably not going to be able to follow along. Uh, one of the first gotchas that I ran into is that I needed an SD card, which I did not have an extra one of those laying around. So I had to wait two days to get that. Um, and then once I had that, then I had to get the software installed. And we're going to walk through all of that. Um, you can totally expense it. Uh, I actually found one on Amazon. It was about $6. Uh, and the biggest the, the card that this device will take is 32 gigs. And we'll get into all that here in a second. Uh, but a 32 gig SD card of the specific type that they call out, uh, which we'll get into right now. So let me go to the getting started instructions for getting started. Oh, actually, actually, I had that one open already. So this is what took me most of my time is this getting started with EV3 dev environment. Let me blow that font up a little bit for you. So um, the first thing that it said is I need a micro SD card that is the HC, um, not XC. Um, and I don't even know that I've really paid that much attention to an SD card and what kind it is, but they wanted a micro SD HC that's not bigger than 32 gigs. Um, and so that is the first thing that I had to get. Otherwise, it, it won't work. Uh, so a lot of the cards that I buy now are 128 or 256. So I, I had to go out and get one of these, but it was very, very affordable. Like I said, I think it was $6. And that was shipped. So... Um, very, very affordable. Uh, the other thing you need is a computer with an adapter because you're going to need to be able to download the software. Um, but when when I ordered the SD card, it came with an adapter. And so I was able to plug that right in and, and be off and running. So the other thing you'll need is um, a way to communicate with the device. 
So I ran around my house this morning trying to find one of these because it's not the traditional like micro SD that uh, it's mi it's mini uh, mini USB. And so I don't know if you can, let's see if we can get it to fill. I have to put my hand in front of my face often to get this to work. But you can see it's that tip type. Um, so if you have if you have one of these, great. You probably have one of these cables. Uh, but these are not um, these are not USB cables that are often used anymore. So um, that is the one that I'm using to communicate with the device. Uh, now let's see if I just ruined my connectivity. I did. Let's do all network connections wired. Okay, it's it's connecting itself automatically. That's perfect. So. I needed that USB cable also, and I had one around, but I had to find it because it wasn't uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought. So what I had to do to get all this stuff set up is I had to download this image. Um, this is the image that uh, you use for Mindstorms, but you can also do a lot of this stuff on Raspberry Pi if you'd rather, um, instead of your PC. Remember, we're talking about uh, communicating with a PC versus uh, <coughs> uh, Raspberry Pi. I had to flash the SD card, um, so there's this software called Etcher that I had to install. Uh, and Etcher took the software that I had, it just took the image file that I, I had downloaded um, and it wrote it to the SD card for me. Uh, and so eventually I ended up with something that looked like this where I had flashed the image and I went through the process and then I got this flash complete. So uh, I, again, we've already had to download um, the image that needs to run on the SD card. We had to order an SD card and we had to use this Etcher software to be able to load the software directly onto the SD card. And then we can skip 3A because that's um, for Raspberry Pi stuff. We're not doing that. The next thing I needed to do was boot up the device with the SD card inside of it. Um, and this goes through a few things. It sets some things up um, and runs a bunch of stuff. One of the other things that I found that was very interesting is that it doesn't... Uh, this, is, um, this paragraph here I thought was kind of interesting. Um, in the corner of the device, and I don't have an easy way to show you this... Um, but on the screen, where you would normally expect to see a battery icon, again, I gotta cover my face or my camera focuses on me, where the battery icon is, um, it actually shows the voltage um, that you have left. Is that right? Yeah, the remaining voltage of the power supply, which is just six double A's. Um, so I have 6.19 left, but these batteries have been in here a while, I have not replaced them. It says if the voltage drops below five, the brick will turn off and unsaved, all unsaved data will be lost. So I'm guessing that if I have six AA batteries, I must have eight volts. Um, I'm a little below six volts, but it's uh, it's dwindling down as we go. So once I've got that set up, you can see there's the eight number. Um, oh, Amit is following me. This is a new feature I just added to my channel, everybody. Uh, if I get a follower, it, it pops up this little thing, probably plays a little audio for you. Uh, but that's a new thing that I just added to the, the screen, so thank you for that. Also, if you subscribe, there's something cool for that one as well. Um, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to trick out my channel a little bit. You can see I've got the little follow bar down at the bottom, and that's gone up one. Uh, ice cream following. Thank you, guys. This is great. Um, if you guys hit the, sub, uh, the following button, I think that will let you know um, that, it, uh, that when I go live, it'll, you'll get an email or a notification letting you know uh, that I just went live. Um, but, but thank you guys. That's, uh, that's really kind of you to follow me. So we'll get that number up there. <laughs> Ice cream had to unfollow to refollow. Uh, you're all welcome to do that. We can make it a distracting show, uh, for those of you that want to see your name up on the screen. But, uh, I thought that was kind of cool. That's a new little cool thing I've added to the, uh, to the display. And it's just, uh, it's, it's fun to play with all the streaming software because there's so much cool stuff to do. Could you guys hear the audio? Did the audio for the alert play? Because I can't hear it here. I don't have headphones on. Let me know. I'm going to keep moving here. So the the next thing that I needed to do was power off the device um, and then uh, set it up one more time. And so this is where setting up a network connection became a little tricky because oh, you guys are lights green. This is going to be a fun challenge. I'm going to have to just stay, to stay focused. Um, I had to set up a, a network connection. And so for this... Um, by default, an EV3 device has a has the ability to communicate with my Wi-Fi and do stuff. Um, but the software that we're running, this EV3 dev environment, does not have the ability to do that. And so uh, in order to do networking, in order to connect this device, that's what I'm using the cable for. And so if we uh, open this up as a new tab, uh, you can see that I have a bunch of options for networking in here. 
Um, you could get a Wi-Fi dongle. I have, um, I don't have a Wi-Fi dongle, but I had some other options in here. I'm using USB through a PC, but I also have a USB Ethernet adapter. This is just the Mac networking dongle. Um, I was going to give this a try, but thankfully, um, just plugging it into my computer worked. So that was uh, that was awesome. The one thing that I needed to do was go to go into all networking connections and actually tell it to connect. And then once it did, it was connected. And I've already tested that I can make an SSH connection between my laptop and the device. So I think we're going to be good there. But this is something that I honestly just solved uh, just a few minutes ago. So once we have networking set up, uh, our next step is to connect to the EV3 via SSH. And so uh, it gives you some instructions on how to do this. I have lost my connection. So we're going to go back and um, grab the little command line string that they want me to use. Which is, which is this one here, SSH robot at evdev.local. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over to my environment here and we're going to SSH into the device. And it's going to ask me what the password is. I didn't know the password, um, but by default it's maker. So I just typed in maker and there we go. We now have an SSH connection into Lego Mindstorms um, device that's sitting here on my desk. Awesome. So we're now at the point where I literally have not looked at the next step. Um, so we're going to spend the next hour and 49 minutes or so kind of getting as far as we can and see, and hopefully we can get this whole thing done. Um, but that is yet to be seen. So let me come back here and get rid of this page because I've got my SSH connection. And it wants me to type fortune um, to print out a random quote from a database. Oh, okay. I don't know why I want to do that, but I'll try it. Awesome. So the fortune command worked. So we're just going to continue moving through this tutorial um, and see what we need to do. So if you don't see any errors printed and your output looks similar to the above, you're good to go. So that was just my test to make sure that everything is working properly. All right, step seven, choose a programming language and write some code. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do that. I was told I was writing in Python, so I didn't know that I'd have to choose a programming language. Before you can start writing code, you need to choose a programming language, um, Python. Oh, I see, so like I need a development environment locally. That makes sense. So let's go here. And we can just, I have the desktop app, so we'll just clone it right from here. Maybe. There we go. So my local path, yeah, that's perfect. We're just going to put it right there in my GitHub folder. Boom, clone it. I don't actually know what I'm doing or why I'm doing this, but... Um, Let's let's take a look what's down here. To start, you need a way to work with Python. We recommend the EVDev Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, all right, let's find some extensions. That's this. Yeah. EV3Dev. Is it EV3Dev Browser? What was it called? Um, all right, this this is clearly going to be a bit of a challenging for me. I'm using Stretch. That's good. Searching. Oh, wait, discover devices. I don't want to do that yet. I want to find the thing. I don't have to drag this down, do I? Oh, here we go. Marketplace is what the thing I want. I was looking for, like, there should just be an ins installation link. Install Open Visual Studio Code.app. That's all beautiful. Uh, we can close you. This looks similar, but I just want to make sure I get the right one. Uh, let's choose install. If you guys haven't done plugins for Visual Studio Code too, man, there's a there's a lot of power there. Um, we have one for Alexa. Um, there's an excellent one for Particle, which is another IoT board that I've done some work with. Um, so we now have the plugin installed. I think I can just close this. And uh, we're probably going to want to open that folder that I just... 
or that project that I just downloaded from GitHub. So we'll go look there. Open. Okay, so we're, I'm, I'm making guesses now. I shouldn't be making guesses. So let's close this. Nope, I needed to go to this and come back to my programming languages. Okay, so I need to open this GitHub repo because this was the one that was telling me what to do. And then we're gonna open this get started too. This is probably something helpful. Okay. To start out, you'll need a way to work with Python. We recommend the extension. Um, Template for a Python script, that's great. We're, I feel like we're jumping fast here and I, I feel like I'm missing a step. This is the same thing I'm seeing. A Python 3, great. Before continuing, make sure you have this all set up. Let me go check that extension just to see what's... View extensions. Well, how do I find that? I don't want to open your wiki, but I think I'm going to have to. Okay, that is not a great sign. Settings? No, I want none of this. Okay, so let's close this down and close this down. Let's see, if I come to the main guide, so we're here, get started with Python. I think this is what Amit is referring to. That is this one, I think. Oh yeah, here, we're gonna go do this. This Python plus VS Code introduction tutorial. I just wanna know what I'm doing. So I have that step-by-step. Download the VS Code Hello Python from, oh, there we go. That's a that's probably a good thing. Let's download that. Yeah, startup, thank you. I, th I think I just found that also. So we'll open this up. And see what we find inside. I'm going to take... Well, okay, let's, let's just do it this way. File, open. Downloads. Ooh, this workplace has extension recommendations. Show recommendations. I know it's hidden behind my camera. I don't want to... I didn't really think I needed to do that. I already have that installed.
Okay. Is there a reload that I'm not seeing? If you go All right, what are we doing wrong? This is the this is the same page that I'm looking at here. So I have my Hello Python master. It wants me to Okay, so I guess I can do this another way. View Isn't that normally like a start screen? Go view Amit, that's good news that you don't think I need any of that. I, I just feel like I'm waiting, like, the thing that I'm hung up on is that they're saying, like, after I do this, I'll get the extension to kick open, and then they're talking about, like, browsing for my device. So, I'm. this is the part that I'm really trying to get to, which is to actually see my device in Visual Studio Code, and I'm not seeing that. So, I don't... Let's quit Visual Studio Code. Code Show, thank you for the follow. Um, I love that little guitar guy. He's uh, he's pretty awesome. But thank you for the follow. Um, we're gonna make our way to 250, uh, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, but welcome. Thank you for being here. All right, Amit is saying that I need to go here. Yeah, this is this is where I was, um, and this is the thing that I have installed. What I don't see is how I get to this. Like as I'm in, well now I have to bring this back to like full screen. Um, as I'm in here, um, install all. I don't want any of that. I just want to be able to see. Oh, it's down here. Click here to connect. Look at that. This is the thing that I missed. It was just down there at the bottom. It was hiding. So, okay. So now I think now I think we're fine. I just didn't see that down there at the bottom. I was looking for a way to find my device browser. Um, so are we, why are we yellow? I want to be green like they're green. Still trying to connect. It says it's connected here. Time out while waiting for handshake. Reconnect. I have, let's try this one more time, reconnect. I kind of feel like these two things are independent of each other and that this is trying to do the same thing. But it's not connecting to my device for sure. But it did say in the instructions that we could do this via SSH if we prefer. Hmm. 
Well, we're not connecting to the device. But I think that might be okay. I really just want to get to like the doing. I mean, I just rebooted, I just rebooted this, and I'm clearly having no issue connecting to it via SSH in the terminal, but this, this it does not like. What is that? Do I know the name of my device? Gives me nothing. I was I was feeling so confident when we were here, and it asked me to ask for that quote, and then we have fallen apart since. Um, well, I did I did promise that this was going to be a train wreck. So we're going to we're going to keep rolling here. I'm going to grab my stool. As I was looking at these instructions, it just looked like so much. Um Okay, so if I if I look at the file that they've got for me here, hello.py I'm assuming that doing this again is just going to give me the same result, but yeah, sitting is always uh, when I need to get some focus. That's when it's that's when it's time to get angry at this. Um, but I'm working in so many different environments that I don't I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, Jeff, that's where I'm at. I'm I'm SSH'd into this, but this this is the EVDev extension and this is supposed to, like according to the tutorial, this is supposed to choose my device ev3 dev and then it turns green and then I can see the files on it but I'm not able to get that to work for some reason I hmm. Yeah, this is not solid, Ryan. Welcome back, by the way. Um, I just added a new feature to this stream too, Ryan. Um, I don't know if you're currently following me, but if you unfollow and refollow, uh, there's kind of a cool thing that happens on the screen if you want to give it a shot. Um... Let's see. There we go. Nice work. Thank you for that. Um, it's good to see that it's working well. Um, man, what? Uh, oh, there's Karthik. Thank you, Karthik. 
Uh, you guys get the little sound effect and everything. It's nice. Um... <laughs> we'll just call it a day right there. Now, this is, this is going to be a tough one today. Um... Okay, so I'm in the Explorer. I find the device browser. Let me see if maybe I just have my network connection stuff set up wrong. Thank you, Trade Last. Um, tethering. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Uh, I don't. I mean, I SSH to the device, so I was. Con I'm connected. I, I don't know who we're kidding here. Uh, and now I've done something dumb here where I don't have access to the network connections. So we're gonna we're gonna reboot the mine. Oh, there we go. We're gonna reboot the Mindstorm. Because we're, we're definitely connected to this device. Um, Ryan, we're connected via USB. Uh, at least we think we are. I'm assuming while this thing is shut down that if I say... Come on. Keep up with me, computer. Yeah, it won't even let me... This will save you some headaches. All right, Jeff Nunn. So I need to install the remote SSH extension. My computer has completely decided to chug on me here though. I'm not able to even click on that link. Install. Okay, this is also a good sign, right? Like we, this means we definitely were connected to this device before. Um, so that all feels proper and right. Where do we go? What had just happened? Configuring the wireless network, and then once it's connected, we'll see. We'll see what we come up with. Connected, retry. What I would expect it to do is freak out and say, "Hey, I don't know the password." But let's see what we get this time. What 
that kind of felt like what it was supposed to do. Oh, somebody turned it. Light's purple now. Oh, it's kind of a, I think that's blue. Somebody turned it blue. Um, connect to host. waiting for it to ask me for a password. Because there is a password to SSH into this. Setting up SSH host, there we go. Press enter to confirm, M-A-K-E-R. Jeff Nunn, you might have saved my day here. Could not, the remote, come on. Let's at least try this again. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely having a network issue of some kind, but this this works, right? I mean, if I if I do this, I can connect to the device. And I don't mind playing on a command line if I have to. This works, like I'm, I'm in and I'm connected to the device right now. Um, Fortune, that was the thing I could test it with. So I have an SSH connection. That feels okay. Um, they really want me to use this extension. Um, so can I do like, um, uh, oh, ice cream, it's always on. I came in this morning and the light was red, so uh, it most certainly changed. Uh, the light is always on. The camera is not always on. But uh, you guys are welcome to change the light anytime you want. Um, what can I do in here? Why don't I seem to be able to do anything? All right. Now we're getting somewhere. So I've got directories. I don't know that that really helps me. I was in the home folder, just so I don't forget that. But there were no files in there. <laughs> Karthik, you're right. But it's just one light, uh, and it's not uh, its not anything else in my house. I don't want to let randoms uh, control my whole house, but I will definitely allow you to have the one light. Um, yeah, th th Ryan, this is kind of where I started. I've been on a few of these pages already. Um... It would be nice if they had connecting to EV3 dev using SSH. Did that. That's great. This is the thing that I did. This is the thing that's working wherever my Visual Studio is. I am connected to the device and I can navigate around. Uh, CD robot. But there's nothing in that home folder. Uh, so we need to figure out how to get some files over there. And let's see, getting started with an editor such as Nano using the Python Interact REPL. If you don't know how you're probably better off choosing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, I'm probably better off choosing this. I'm going to go back to this one more time. How many tabs can I open? And we're going to read this again. All right, let's, let's quit VS Code. And 
open it again. That has me install it. And then we get to the point where I can't connect to the device. All right, the S code opening. And uh, I, I shouldn't have any Mac filtering on. I mean, the thing is, is I'm, I'm making an SSL connection, SSH connection, no problem from the terminal. I, I don't know why this would be an issue, especially because it sees my device. Right, like the fact that it can see it, shouldn't that mean that like, we, we shouldn't have any issues connecting to it? Definitely not connecting to it, but the, this is the step that they need me to go through in order to um, take the next steps, in order to move files, in order to do all the stuff that I want to do. Timed out. I'm not on the corporate VPN. That sh that's sometimes a headache, but this is all local. This shouldn't even matter. Hmm. What else can I try? Is there any other settings or anything? No. Is there a settings file for the VS Code extension? Let's go look at that. Extensions. This is the page I keep seeing. Any connected EV3 dev device should be automatically discovered. No configuration necessary. Okay, um, you're right about that. It's definitely finding the device. I did not change the default password. Um, I was very nervous to do that. See, I don't know that I'm having, am I having the same issue that they're having? What? All right, let's go look at the, whoa, what just happened machine? That's not good. Don't normally uh, lock up sliding between two screens. I'm gonna unplug my computer for one moment, apologize. What? Well, I think my computer just died. This is, the, this is a day. what we're doing uh thank you all for joining it's been fun today um what's next i have a black screen on my laptop let's try just completely rebooting it
Well, it started up again. That's a good sign. Whew. It's just it's just one of those days, guys. Um I anticipated that this was going to be tricky. Um, Karthik, I, I can explain that. Uh, the, that's a good question. So my plan, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you kind of what my plan is, is to take this device and ideally have it sitting on a shelf like here or something. And then um, from here, hook some um, devices, some, some Mindstorm devices to the thing so that like I can make a little arm pop up that just says hi or like new follower or I don't know, something that like interacts with the stream the same way you guys are doing with the light bulb. Um, I thought this would be kind of a fun way to um, make, make my environment more interactive. I have some other ideas on things I'm gonna do. I'm, if you've ever been to like a, like a shooting gallery, uh, that you might see at like a carnival or a fair where like there's all sorts of stuff and if you if you shoot a specific target then like something happens. Uh, I was thinking it would be kind of cool to run all of those through my Alexa skill and have like four or five different things um, that you could interact with or play with or whatever. But I'm not I'm not having any of that success today. We're waiting for my machine to reboot because uh, it decided it was no longer interested in playing my games. Um, so we'll get there. Uh, Startup, thank you for the tip on Stretch versus Jesse. I am definitely running the Stretch version. Um, oh, I shut down because there was a problem? No kidding. All uh, right. So that's pretty fun. We don't need to broadcast my to-do list. Uh, I got to see what other software is going to try and force itself on me here. Um, are we good? Let's try plugging this all back together. It's connecting to my machine. We'll open this up. Okay, so at this point, we've pretty much rebooted everything that we would expect to reboot. Um, in case you guys post more links, I want to make sure I grab this to twitch. Stop it. Twitch.tv. Just everything needs to play right now, huh? Okay. I don't want to watch the video. All right. Pause the video because I don't need that right now. What I need is the chat. Because you guys are being incredibly helpful and generous and nice and patient. Uh, all the best things for a group of people that are going to watch me beat my head against the wall. Uh, we're going to take this and do that just so I have it available. Now we're going to go to... Um, this and down here we're going to get get started with python um oh you, you got to you got to have them ready to go um that is those memes <coughs> all right then we were working on this python introduction i have vs code here i'm going to try and connect since now i've rebooted my entire machine Maybe it'll just magically work. I'm too optimistic for that.
I'm wondering if there's a timeout that I can look at in the setting of the extension, maybe. So we find this extension settings. It's probably not this if it's already 30 seconds. But we'll try. Reconnect. Um, uh, ice cream, the question is, do I get additional options? This is the, the total number of options I have are reconnect or connect to another device. Um, I think this is just going to make me wait longer to fail is all I'm really getting with a longer timeout. This SSH I seem to be able to do no problem, maybe. Oh, no, it's definitely not going to work because I typed it wrong. <sighs> yeah, extending that timeout didn't help me at all. It just made me wait longer to fail, which is kind of what I expected. Extension settings, change this back to 30. Um, that's automatically saved. Great. Let's try that again. SSH robot at ev3dev.local. M-A-K-E-R. And we're in. Um, is that really it, do you think it is, startup? That it, I just need to run this as an administrator? I'm, I'm, I'm on a Mac, I don't know that I... I don't know that I need to do that. But we can, we can try that, let's quit. Um, I have to remember how to do that. Nope, that's not what I wanted. There's a way, how do I do that? Um, my, my Mac knowledge is falling down. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. I don't, I don't think there's a run into, although I feel like there might be somewhere. Um, I can see that on a PC for sure. I know I've run into that a bunch with Windows. I'm not even gonna bother. That's just gonna disappoint me. SSH, robot at ev3dev.local local maker I guess we're just going to do this the hard way because uh, I really want to do some stuff and I was so excited for today so let's get out of that I just, what I really want to do is get this file onto the device. I guess they're just assuming here that um, they say, otherwise you can work with things like Nano. Use the Python interactive or roll your own solution. I may, I may have to, I may have to give up for today until I can figure out what in the world I'm doing. I mean, well, we can try that. Let's let's give that a try, trade last. Uh, 
Um, I don't, I don't think this will be it, but visual studio code. Uh, Yeah, I didn't think so. Is it BS? Oh, it's got spaces in it. Goodness. Okay. Okay. We've got as much authority now as we possibly can. The device is connected. And boom. That's about as run as administrator as I'm gonna get though. And it's still not working. Failed to connect. Well, this is not the thing I expected today. I was um, I was way out ahead of it and um, spent my time. Robot at ev3dev.local. I have no issue connecting to the device this way. But I don't have any instructions on how to do this. Yeah, startup. I definitely got it to fire up using sudo. Um, I just wrapped the the app name in quotes, and it worked. Um, but I don't I don't know what to do from here. Hmm. I don't really want to give up, uh, and I'm not going to give up. Like we're going to figure this out. Uh, it just may not be today. If I go to their tutorial, is there like a? See, the thing that really bugs me about this is they have this really nice tutorial on what to do, but they don't have anything. They don't create any. They don't have anything here for me about what to do when it fails. Uh, we, can, we can try connecting via Bluetooth. The problem is, is that my, uh, my machine has not been playing nice with Bluetooth. All right, we disconnected from wired. We'll go try Bluetooth. It says Bluetooth not available. It just says Bluetooth not available. I don't I don't know why. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna work. Mine just connected no problem. The only difference I see is I have a nine volt of batteries left and you had six, maybe fresh batteries. All right, let's give that a try. Uh, I will be right back. Feel free to mess with the light. All right, I'm back. We've got batteries. So we're gonna shut the device down, power off. It's doing its thing. Yeah, Karthik, I, I gave the thought to um, using the nano option, but what I didn't see was any instructions on what I needed to do next. I think there was kind of the assumption that like, 
hey, you, you'll know what you're doing, so go ahead and do that. And I will be the first to admit I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, four. Maybe I have six. There we go. I have six. Okay. Those will be leftovers. This will be trash. Um, all right. Pop the back off this thing. These are probably the batteries that I put in this thing originally when we first got it. Like two years ago, but the fact that I had power, I felt like I was being wasteful to change them. All right, we are... Okay, we're back in the game. We have six new batteries. Turn this bad boy on. And get back to failing for other reasons. So it is booting up. It found my SD card. We're loading the EV3 dev environment. Uh, this takes, you know, it takes a minute or so to get there. And then I, hopefully I'll be able to see my battery condition, power condition. I hadn't given that a thought, Jeff Nunn, but that, that could very well be the case. Um, that maybe the power was just too low to support what I was trying to do. When we get down to this low level stuff like power levels, this is where I'm quite the amateur. If you want to sling some code, I'm, I'm with you all day. But uh, some of this hardware stuff it can elude you. Still loading. I mean, it's a whole different operating system that we have to load on this thing, so it does take a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to quit VS Code again. With disconnecting and reconnecting the device, I don't want any weirdness there. Um, all you have to do is say what's on the sign here. Uh, I can show you. This is probably easier. Um, the skill is called um, Jeff Blankenberg, so if you don't have it already, you might say enable Jeff Blankenberg. And then once you've done that, you can say those exact commands, or you can open the skill and just tell it what color you want. And um, maybe maybe that will solve your problem. But uh, if it doesn't work right away, then you just need to enable the skill. Uh, Ryan, that might be helpful. Uh, maybe not, though. All right, so let's go back to network connection. I have 9.46 volts now. That's good. I am connected. Let's open this up. Man, I hope this is a power issue. Uh, startup, was that you? Did you, uh, you just turn green here? Let's see if... Was it a power issue? Already feeling like no. This should be so fast. <sighs> Definitely connected. Nope, that did not work. I want to see one more thing here. SSH robot at ev3dev.local. One six nine dot two five four dot five six dot one one eight. Yeah, I'm. I'm. There's no doubt. I'm connecting to this device. Um, that's the IP address that the device thinks it has. And this all works great. So why doesn't this work great? Hey, Jeff Nunn, why don't you just stop over uh, and help me figure this out? 
yours seems to work just fine. Or maybe we should just do this on your channel later today. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, Jeff Nunn does an awesome robotics show on Friday afternoons Eastern Time. And uh, I, I don't know what he's covering today, but it's always incredibly interesting. So it might be worth tuning in. Um, when you say you log in, what, log in where? This thing here? Oh, you know what might be the issue, I wonder? Is the date. Well, no, yours says Sunday, January 27th. Mine says that's the version. I was wondering if maybe it thought it was the... My device was the wrong time. I mean, I think it also does think it's the wrong time because it thinks my last login was October 23rd. I, I don't know that that would be an issue, but I wonder if the device time, which I don't think I have the ability to change. Not it. I'm really stumped here. I don't know. I don't know what else I can try. Uh, you guys have been fantastic in your recommendations and links. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that this SSH is working. Uh, I was worried that it was like pretending or talking to some other fake endpoint, but it's it's definitely there. It's definitely working. Uh, so I think the, the next step for me is either going to be to really try and dig in to this device browser thing. Uh, okay, yours is Friday, September 27th, so that feels good too. It's not just a mess. What? What else can I even try? Yeah, and I got I, I went and got the one specifically that they asked me to. Um, like I try, I didn't just browse and find. Uh, so if I go to extensions and I choose ev three dev, whoop. this one's made by David David Lechner. I don't like when there's like same logo, different publisher. Oh, this is the this is the previous version, so this should this shouldn't even be in the store. So this is really the only one that exists. Uh, I went to their wiki too, and I I didn't find anything useful there. Troubleshooting. This is the troubleshooting page that Ryan sent me. This doesn't help me. I don't know what glob patterns are, but... Yeah, no, none of this is really...
Okay, I can manually add devices. Let's see if I can see the the version, Jeff, that you're running. I'm running That doesn't say. We can we can see what I installed though. I have that here in my downloads. EV3 dev stretch. EV3 generic 29. This is the 1023 version, and you have the March 3rd version. Um, yeah, that like reflashing that thing, that would be like a let's end the stream and come back another time. It doesn't seem likely though, right? I mean, we're talking about a version that's seven months newer. And I specifically didn't get into any of the beta experimental versions. Okay, so let's... What if we get in here to the, not this, this, extension settings. Edit. Jeff Nunn, did you change any of this stuff? So yours looks just like this? address one six nine two five four five six one one eight what if I just manually add the device like that Did you see in here, if I look at this extension settings, down here the last one is the password. The password for the robot user is set to null to prompt for password or use public key authentication. But if I click on this, it's not even listed. So what is the property name that I would need for the password for that device? Help me out here, guys. Yeah, let's let's do it. I don't even see that as an option. You're right, I'm not being very experimental, Jeff. Jeff is angry. Oh, come on, what? What? How? Alexa, ask Jeff Blankenberg to turn the light green. You tried to change the lamp color, but you selected an unsupported color. 
Unsupported. Please choose from the common colors of the rainbow, or pink, cyan, or white. What else do you want to know about Jeff? Green. The lamp has been set to green. Tune Sweet. into twitch.tv slash Jeff Blankenberg to see it change oh. live on air. What oh. else do you want to know about Jeff? Stop. I got a bounce. Okay. Anybody? Anybody want to help me out on why that just happened? Oh my gosh. That is... Maddening. Uh, okay, so... Press F5 to download the program and run it. All right. So... Like I have this, we're gonna go full screen on this guy just so we can see everything. So if I hit F5, Welcome to voiceover. No, that's not what voiceover I asked you to do. Descriptions of items on the screen Stop and can it. be used to control the computer using only your keyboard. If you already know how to use That's not... Come on. Do the thing that I want you to do. Download to Jeff is angry is complete. Oh my god. Cover my face. No, it went away. No. Come on, do the, do the thing. There we go. It says hello world. Guys, it says hello world. We, we, we did a thing. <laughs> All right. Um, I, don't, I don't have any idea why this is working. And this little hello world script, that's a lot of code to say hello world, um, is that it's just doing this. <clears throat> I have... Literally no idea how we got here. Whatsoever. Um, but we're here. Okay, cool. So... Now what do you want me to do? I don't want to do all that. I just want to... I just want to get back to my tutorial. So controlling the LEDs with a touch sensor. Oh, so now, now we gotta like get into it. Hold on. Okay, here's some things I don't know. What's a touch sensor? That's not. Not. Oh, man, come on. That's like a. This is like a vision, like IR sensor. This could be a touch sensor. It has buttons on it. That's. A, all right. Let's do this. All right, Ryan. Thanks for uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks for the help today. This has been good. I'm gonna go see what a Lego Mindstorms touch sensor looks like. I don't need to type. Looks like my brain is just not working. It's that one, huh? It looks a lot like this, kind of. Oh, 
Oh, this is the one, okay. So this is a touch sensor apparently, because that looks just like that picture. So we're gonna go with that one. Um, F5, it's, you have to hit the function key, the FN that's in the bottom left corner. FN and then F5, and that's what fired me up. Uh, so I need a network cable. Got a bunch of those in here. This is so exciting. Okay. Um, so LEDs. What LEDs? This code will turn the LED. What what LEDs? Do I have an LED thing too? LED Lego Mindstorms. LED. Images. What? I don't remember seeing any light bulbs in here of any kind. Pieces. Do, 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 do. No, I don't think I have anything with LEDs. This is just the starter kit, but I don't think. Let's see what else we could do. Um, instead of LEDs, what, I mean, what are they talking about? Do you do you see that? Like it says right here, controlling the LEDs with a touch sensor. Oh, they mean the LEDs on the device itself. Got it. So plug a touch touch sensor, which is the the one that I had a second ago this guy, plug this into any port. So we're gonna plug it into number one. And just so you guys can see what I'm doing here, I have this touch sensor, this red thing, which I'm gonna push the button for. And uh, I've got that just plugged into the first port here on my device. Okay. So I'm gonna take this code and I think that might be it. Yeah, let's let's do some LEDs. So we're gonna go back to Visual Studio, and instead of print, well, we can leave print Hello World. But let's no, yeah, okay. So we'll lose the Hello World, and then save that and run it. It didn't, touch sensor is not defined. I saw a thing about that here. So we'll say input one. What do we get on our device? Nope. Name touch sensor. So there's probably an import statement thing that I needed to bring in that I didn't do. <laughs> Which is all this. So import all of that stuff. And I don't know what EV3 dev2 is. Hopefully it'll just know what that is. I don't know. There's one way to find out. It's running. But press the touch sensor to change the LED color. No way! Ah, oh, this is the greatest day of all time. So uh, you can see that the, I have two red LEDs on the front, and I have my button. And when I push my button, green, red, green, red. Oh man, we are on our way. This is so cool. Okay, so I have, I have my app running. I have, uh, I have a clicky button. Um, that's all good. What's next? Let's get to the next. 
uh, I want to do a motor, running a single motor. Um, I just want to, that's one of these bad boys. Let's get another network cable going. And we'll do that in port two. Okay. Um, I have that there. I just want to do this, right? Oh, output. It's got to be an output port. Never mind. Output A, like that. And I'm going to take those two lines and we're going to bring them down here where we had all of our other stuff. Actually, you know what? You know what would be pretty cool is let's do. We'll set up our motor reference here. This is where we get access to the motor itself. So that's M. And then when it's pressed, we'll make the motor go. I'm, I'm just making this up as I go if you guys haven't noticed, but this is, this is pretty cool. Oh, um, there's already a debug configuration. How do I? Oh, I gotta stop it, okay. Now let's run it. Okay, I've got my code and my motor. Hopefully we should see that red guy turn. Waiting for the software to get loaded. Press the button. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Push the button. Spinning motor. Oh man. This is the greatest day of my life. We just went from completely the worst day I've ever had on stream to one of my favorite days of all time. Okay, so we, we've gotten to the point now where I can control a motor and a button. Um, wait, I can do a, I can have a talk? Yeah, we're gonna have a talk too. Thank you, Karthik, for coming. Um, I will see you again soon, hopefully. Um, let's bring in a reference to sound, whatever that is. And then let's take these two lines. Um, this is so cool guys. I'm so excited. Um, we'll just drop this one right here and then we'll drop this one. Uh, when I push the button too, actually let's, uh, let's just comment this out. Is Python commenting the same? No. What is Python commenting? Pound sign. Um, all right. So now we're going to say, um, ha, let's, let's do this. Alexa. I don't want to say the actual word. Alexa, stop. Let's see if we can get the device to change the light. That'd be awesome. Okay. So, uh, I've, I've, I'm not using the motor. The light is green. We have our code. I'm going to stop running it and we're going to start running it. And once it's ready to go, um, I will push the button and hopefully I'll set off the device. I don't know how to control the volume on this thing, so I don't know what kind of volume we'll get, but we'll see. She didn't seem to like that very much. I'm going to move her clo move it closer. Let's see if we can get it to work. Alexa, ask Jeff Blackenberg to turn the light red. Where's the speaker? Alexa, ask Jeff Blackenberg to turn the light red. She doesn't understand him very well. Alexa, ask Jeff Blackenberg to turn the light red. No, she's she's ignoring it. That would have been pretty cool though. Um, okay, so for whatever reason, she doesn't even hear him. She The first time I did it, sh the device um, respond here. Let's mute this and get this out of the way for a second. And we'll unmute this one. We'll try and do this really close. Turn the light red. 
You tried to change the lamp color, but you selected oh. an unsupported color. Please choose from the common colors of the rainbow, or pink, cyan, or white. That was so close! What would you like to know? Stop. We were I so have close to return there. some videotapes. Um... Jeff Nunn, the question was, did I clone the repo to my Mac or to the device? I cloned the repo to my Mac, so if I stop this... Um, and we come into just the files. I cloned this little Hello World sample here to my device. And then all I'm doing is I guess I could just come over to this run mode and I'm running it on the device. So it takes it from here. This is using, I'm guessing, the, um, the device browser. It's using this to communicate directly with my device. It's packaging everything up, shipping it over. That's why it takes a little while. Um, and then it, and then it's running. So let's uh, let's give this one more run. Man, that would be so cool to have that as uh, something this could do. And then my goal, ideally, is to write a program of things it can do, um, and then swap out the trigger from this thing to instead be Alexa. So I'm waiting for that device to go away. Alexa, stop. We are running, so let's try one more time. Alexa, ask Jeff Blankenberg to turn the light red. You tried to change the lamp color, but you selected an unsupported color. What color Please is choose it from the common colors of the rainbow, or pink, cyan, or white. What let's would you like to know? Stop. Um, laters. Laters is right. Let's see what it's hearing. Because it seems like my dog has decided to go off. Turn the turn the light red. It's hearing light red. Okay, let's try lamp. Stop run. We'll dump that code back into our device. And the way I know, I, don't, I think you can see this here, when this thing turns from blinky green to red. Um, well, I changed it to the word lamp startup. I'm hoping that will solve my problem. But we'll see. Okay, we're good. Alexa, ask Jeff Blankenberg to turn the lamp red. The lamp has been set to red. Tune into twitch.tv slash Jeff Blankenberg to see oh, it change live on air. That is what so cool. What else do you want to know about Jeff? All right, so, Alexa, stop. So we've done... You asked me something I wasn't prepared for. Alexa, I stop. See you when I see you. So we've gone most of the way there. We now have a Lego Mindstorm controlling Alexa, controlling a light bulb. This is awesome. Uh, all right, so let's get back to our tutorial. More demo code, library frequent next questions. This is great. What I haven't seen at all yet is the, how do I get Alexa to do it? So we need to go to, um, it wasn't that, this hackster. Um, down here, we have install EVD, get through all that, go to mission one. Make your EV brick react to the wake word. Oh, wow. I didn't realize this was going to be an Alexa gadget play. Interesting. That's not actually how I wanted this to work. Because for an Alexa gadget, I have to pair it to a specific device, and then only that device could control it. What I want to do is internet enable this thing, build an API endpoint and talk to it directly so that I can have my Jeff Blankenberg skill work instead. Mm. 
All right, let's let's back up. Maybe mission two or mission three gives me some of that power instead. Mission. If we go back to the very beginning, I think there were links to the missions. Now this is all going to be. This is all going to be. Um, This is all going to be done in a way where I have to treat it like a gadget, which is fine. I'm, I'm okay with that concept. It just, it limits what I'm capable of doing. Uh, I'm going to take a step back here. Um, controlling a Lego Mindstorm. from an API endpoint. This is what I really want. Ooh. API bridge, Alexa skill, yes, this is what I want. They're using the Azure. Why would you use AVS, APS, AWS, and Azure? All right. I think this is the path I ultimately need to go down, which may not actually require me to have done anything that I was doing. All right, I'm going to get one more good video demo of this. Alexa, set Office LifeX to white. Um, I just want to get this to work one more time. Alexa, ask Jeff Blackenberg to turn the lamp red. The lamp has been set to red. Tune into twitch.tv slash Jeff Blankenberg to see it change live on air. What would you like to know? Stop. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. That's what I'm talking about, everybody. All right, so I think I've got to take a step back and figure out um, how I really want to approach this problem. I think this tutorial might give me everything that I need. Um, but I've got some figuring to do. There's a lot to solve and figure out, and I may just have to manually build some of this stuff. But we're going to get there. We're going to get to a point where I can hook this thing up and have it sitting in the background, and maybe I can hook it up to, like, the uh, the widgets you guys have. If somebody follows me or whatever, I could have it pop up a little thing. I don't know. We'll, I'll have to think that through, but we're, we're almost at time anyway, so I don't want to start a whole new effort um, but I'm really, I really feel like I'm in a good place. Another option I could do is to keep going down the path I'm going. And then when I see something happen, like someone follows, I could tell Alexa to do the thing. But I really would much rather have it set up so that you guys could tell Alexa to do the thing. And that's not, that's not what gadgets are for. I don't think they're exposed that way. Hmm. All right, I've got some thinking to do. This ended up being awesome. Um, thank you guys all for the help and the support and the patience. This was uh, this was a lot. And uh, we really got stuck on trying to communicate with the device, but uh, we made it work. We hacked our way through uh, and we solved a problem. And this is what, I don't know, every day of software development is generally like. So you persevere, you fight through it, uh, you try new things. Uh, and you experiment, and eventually you get to where you want to be. So I hope you guys had some fun today. Uh, I know I did once we finally had some success, and I think this was a, this ended up being a really good stream, uh, despite the fact that we had some struggles at the beginning. 
So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. This is always an absolute pleasure for me. Um, and I will be back next week, uh, hopefully with uh, some ideas about how we're going to get this thing hooked up to the internet. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys all so much. I really do appreciate it.